top nine tips to manage stress. Everyone is very busy, they have a busy work day, and we're here to help make it easy for you. I'm Dr. Carrie Lam, this is Dr. Michael Lam. So we're gonna talk about the nine things you can do to help manage your stress easily. Number one thing is to exercise. Well, exercise is an important part of any uh, optimum uh, body function, but in adrenal fatigue, it's very important that you do the right level of exercise uh, for the right state of you're in. Uh, we have uh, numerous levels from uh, restorative uh, poses to adrenal yoga exercise to adrenal circulation exercises to uh, aerobic exercises to core training that we design for people uh, depend on the state that you are in. Uh, one of the things that you will know is that if you exercise beyond what you can do, uh, you will feel it and you can crash yourself. So don't just go and exercise because the internet says so it's mm -hmm. good. Even I will tell you that exercise is good, but even for myself in my own recovery uh, process, I have learned uh, from multiple mistakes not to do beyond what I can do, but to do what I needed to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So short and sweet, but good exercise that is for your own body. Number two is to manage your time. Everyone has difficulties with this, right? They wake up in the morning, they're very busy all throughout the day. What are some good ways to be able to manage your time? Well, this is a, a real challenge, especially uh, for uh, busy people like us. And uh, I wish I could have a, give you a magic formula, but I think that ultimately uh, you have to kind of take a step back for me is to see what is important and try to limit uh, the number of things and then of course the delegation and uh, to be able to tell people ahead of time that hey listen you know this is where I'm at you know I may not be able to get everything done you know can we uh, give us some time uh, so just made of communication and let our body uh, tell us uh, when it's more ready. Learning how to say no is a very important skill mm -hmm. so sometimes I would be like there's something in my calendar, and there's actually the word something on my calendar. So it's good to learn how to manage your time. That's number two. Number three is to use checklists. Well, uh, checklist is a highly efficient way uh, to get a lot of things done in a short period of time. I use it all the time. Uh, so for my own personal recovery journey, because you know I have a lot of things on my plate. And you know, I want to get them done because that's the nature of my character. But at the same time, I don't want it to drag on. So having a checklist ensures that I will address each issue but not let them burden me unnecessarily. Mm -hmm. And your mind kind of has that little dopamine rush whenever you check off something on your checklist. It's a pretty Correct. good feeling. Mm -hmm. So number four is to become involved. So we're, we're humans, we're social creatures, and becoming involved with other people can help manage your own stress. Well, uh, being involved is a, is a two-edged sword. Many uh, the people I take care of and with adrenal fatigue, especially those who are weak, I actually tell them not uh, to be socially uh, too active uh, because it drains you, you know. It takes energy to be socially involved. So the question is, again, communicating, letting people know, hey, you know, I can only be here for five, ten minutes. I've got to go back to my room and take a break and then come back. So if people understand, you see what I'm saying? So it's just a matter of communication and letting everybody know. Mm -hmm. So number five is to sleep adequately. Sleep is very important because it allows your body to just rest from that day and it helps you um, go through all the stress that you've been through and go through it in your mind. Well, we know that sleep, uh, if you sleep uh, earlier, say around 9, 10 o'clock at night, uh, the cortisol uh, output physiologically is much healthier. However, if you already have a lifelong uh, habit of sleeping later, for example, uh, and you try to force yourself to sleep early, it can actually uh, trigger uh, more stress. So everybody's different. So don't just follow the book, so to say. And you have to learn to listen uh, to the whispers of your body. And the people tell me that I will give them a structure uh, to allow them to have maximum cortisol balance at the same time uh, to be able to overcome uh, their own body's uh, rhythm. Mm -hmm. So sleep is very important. So number six is to learn to accept and to let it go. <laughs> well, that that I have a tough time with because uh, to, to the reality is that you know we are uh, driven uh, many of us uh, to excellence, and part of that drives requires 
us not to accept mediocrity, for example, even though it may not be mediocre, but in our stand it may be different. So this is a personal challenge uh, that you know I have uh, difficulty, and I must say so. <laughs> <laughs> I deal with it too. Learn to accept your failures, learn from them, and move on, and not just dwell on them, right? And number seven is to seek help. This is perhaps the most difficult, even for me in my own personal journey. I think it took me a long time to really understand the limitations of what our medical system and our health care is all about and to be able to accept and then say, hey, we don't know everything. Uh, let's find some people who know, you see. Mm -hmm. And that admission of failure is perhaps the most challenging for me. But once I made that decision, uh, that the rest become easier because, you know, I would know that I would want to seek help, and if I cannot provide myself or my colleagues to help me, I will look outside the box. It's that simple. That's great. So learn to seek help is number seven. And number eight is use complementary aids. So nutrition is very important. In a general fatigue environment, because the pathology is absent, the best way to allow the body to regain its vitality is to give the body the tools for it to heal itself. And there's no better way than uh, to do that than using proper nutrition. And if, if the key word is proper. It's not just any nutrition. You can get fried food, uh, fast food, and get nutrition. But that's not what you want, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, I think uh, that is so, so important, you know. Mm -hmm. And number nine is don't self-medicate. So we, we all love to go to Dr. Google and see what is wrong with us. And so, um, but learning to, uh, like, we go seek, seek help from people and knowing what to do for yourself from someone who knows your body. Is well, we, we live in a world now that's over data. It's almost impossible not to find something wrong with you if you look far, hard, hard and hard, whew, excuse me, uh, far and fast enough. So the, the key is how do you not navigate in a way that you can mislead yourself. And that's very important because when you have over data and over information, you have to be able to sort it out, which are good, which are not so good. And this is a process. And you know, most people that embark on a self-navigation process in the case of adrenal fatigue, because it is so convoluted, they get sidetracked or they get doubt or they don't really know how to navigate when multiple problems all come on at the same time. And so uh, do be very, very careful because that's the perhaps number one mistake you know, that people come to us is that they try. And there's nothing wrong with trying, but you have to know when your trying has failed. Mm -hmm. And that is not easy. Mm -hmm. So that's our number nine, um, to learn not to self-medicate. So those are our top nine tips to managing stress. And we're here to help you, empower you on your journey to health.